Well, hey, y'all. Welcome back. My View on the View, the MVO TV podcast. I am your host. Thank y'all for joining me for this after the show chat for Wednesday, November 22nd. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving here in the U.S. So shout out to all my U.S.ers. Happy Thanksgiving in advance. Happy holiday uh, season to all of us. Shout out to all of our international listeners. Not sure. I think it's just going to be a regular day for some of you guys. Um, So uh, shout out to you guys as well. So let me share um, what I thought about today's show. Now, we know today's show was pre-recorded, right? Um, Because it said pre-recorded. But I always like to remind all of the new people who are like new to ABC's The View, not new to our community, that you always know when a show is live because the announcer will actually say that. You know, The View starts live and da-da-da-da-da. But like today um, and other days, you won't hear her say that because it isn't live. It's pre-recorded. And um, were any of you in the crossover audience, like keeping the, how they keep the audience over for the second show? Uh, let us know and let us know what that experience is like. Um, I got to tell you all something. Tiki? <laughs> Tiki, what's the die bar? <laughs> I actually remember what Anna was talking about. Anna said how she first heard about Tiki was that Whoopi sent her a video of Tiki saying, this dog sounds just like you. I remember last year, I think it was, or maybe it was during the pandemic, Anna saying, Whoopi sent me this video of a dog, but she didn't say the dog's name and saying the dog sounded just like me. So it was just great to see that all come full circle and Tiki actually being in the building today. Wasn't that dog to die for? When Whoopi said this dog is so calm, I'm like, she really is calm. I mean, she's like, I'm used to all of the fanfare. (laughs) I loved it. You know what her owner's story reminded me of, y'all? Because he said, you know, he was talking about he and his husband and their children and how they live in Canada. And during the pandemic, they were just trying to find something fun to do and something to lighten the load. So they started these uploading these videos of their dog dressed in all these fancy outfits because of the weather there in Canada where they live. And um, how he said, he said, now I travel the world with my dog. And that dog has been on the cover of Vogue. This dog has been on some of the most famous iconic magazines and it reminded me of how you really never know if you stay open if I stay open to what where life will take you I'm sure just a few years before the pandemic this dude couldn't have had couldn't have imagined that just a few years later he would literally become rich with because of his dog traveling the world with that dog and being asked to be on this show and that show and the dog being paid for cover appearances and now everyone wants tiki and uh tiki helping people uh you know be better in their lives or come out like he told a story about some people will say dm and say tiki helped me come out to my family and all these things so i just think that's fantastic and i love that that was just an inspirational story. Just remember guys that your life, especially those of you who are kind of confused about what you should be doing right now in your life, or maybe you're getting ready to make a big transition, like leave a city, leave a job, leave a relationship or something. Just remember that the path for our lives is not linear. Okay. So you may have all these expectations, but you got to stay open. If you want to stay on purpose for your earth journey, you got to stay open. You can't say, well, I always thought I'd live, you know, in the big city or I always thought I'd live on the beach or whatever. You got to be willing and open and you will see uh, just how fulfilling life can be when you stay open. And it's not easy to stay open, you know, um, but it can be done. And I loved his story. Okay. All right. The guest they had today, Jojo, I never enjoy when Jojo comes. You want to know why? She is too much for me. Kind of like I, now she is not, her energy is nothing like Leslie Jones. There's somebody else too that just, I can see this lady's face in my head, but I cannot think of her name. I feel the same way, even though there's no comparison between how Leslie's energy is versus Jojo's. But I'm just saying, I feel the same way, meaning I never enjoy their appearances because their energy and stuff is just too much for me. It's just too much for me. And I I don't know who preps these folks for their interviews. Like, I don't know if The View has a prep person or if it's the person's um, uh, agent or what they call in the industry, their handler's job to prep them. But like she was, this is what I'm talking about. JoJo was on one today so much to the point where she didn't even notice the women were kind of losing interest 
in her stories at one point because she was like telling these long stories. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, <laughs> but the guy in the audience who was on that show with her, I think he could tell because I noticed his eyes looking around at the women. And so I was like, I don't know who preps these people, but they need to do a better job because sometimes these people, like who preps Leslie for, to come on the show? Whoever it is needs to say, okay, now Leslie, girl, just answer these people's questions, you know? Um, and there's some, there's a guy I feel this way too about when he comes, he's like, he just like takes over and I'm like, oh my God, I can't, I can't, I can't. But I did watch it. I didn't turn it off. Well, you know what? No, I didn't. That's a lie. I did turn it off. I turned it off and I started watching Gunsmoke. Uh, and then I <laughs> I kept going back and forth to see when it was going to be over. Okay. But other than that, the show was fantastic. I love that they had Carla Hall there today. I love Carla. Carla for me is, I think she's like one of the, other than Bevy Smith, um, B. Smith, excuse me, uh, who has passed away from Alzheimer's a couple of years ago. Remember that whole story about her husband, Dan, having his girlfriend live in the house with them. Y'all remember that? Um, other than her, I want to say Carla. Or was it the Neelys? I don't know. But I, I know Carla was one of the one another black female chef that really um, I connected with her the TV. You know what I mean? Like I was like, oh my God, look at this beautiful black woman doing this wonderful work. Um, because I think she was for me other than B. Yeah, it was Carla. It was Car not the new, it was Carla because I was like, she was the other, the only other black female chef I saw doing what she was doing. Not saying there weren't others. I'm just saying she was the first one that I, other than me, that I was like, oh my God, look at this black woman doing this. Because for so long on these shows, the only chefs they showed us were white. Um, and so, uh, or, and male. So that, that was very interesting for me. So I love when she come, she, she comes, but you know, my favorite chef of all time is Jamie Oliver. And that's because I have a personal connection with Jamie. Um, many, many years ago now, it had to be, I've told this story before, it had to be like 15 years ago. It was a long time ago. Jamie um, tried his best, although it was not that successful because he got so much pushback. He tried to revolutionize the food pro program in the L.A. schools, especially for children who could not afford uh, lunch, to pay for lunch. They were on free lunch. And he tried to uh, it was called Jamie's Food Revolution. I had signed up to volunteer with that program because uh, it it was just, I thought it was fascinating because he had the science to prove. What, now, you got to remember, this was like 15 or 20 years ago when veganism or vegetarianism or, you know, whatever, paleo, like none of that stuff existed. You know, there were people living that way, but it wasn't a big movement the way it is now. He wasn't saying to these schools, these kids need to be vegan. It was none of that. He was just talking about healthy, nutritious meals and the science that shows that it helps kids focus, helps all of us focus for longer periods of time. It also decreases bad behavior when you get kids off all of the processed junk and sugar. And he was like trying to change the vending machines. It, it, it was, he got, you want to who got the biggest pushback from you would have thought it would have been the school districts and, and trust me they did push back but it was some of the parents it was some of the parents can you believe that it was some of the parents and he was like especially if this is the only meal a kid's going to get or the meals are going to get are from the schools they need to be nutritious I don't even remember how long his program lasted um, and it finally finally ended but it was called Jamie's Food Revolution so he was the first chef that I felt like was trying to do some activist type work. Again, not saying he was the only one or the first one. I'm saying in my experience of paying attention to chefs, he was the first one that showed up on my radar. And I was like, wow, look at what he's trying to do out here. You know, it was just, it was just crazy how people just didn't understand. Now, if he tried to do that now in 2023, I think uh, the food revolution would be totally acceptable because we have more science now. Um, you have the whole food trucks, you know, everybody's doing food. I mean, he was trying to do revolutionary stuff like 15 or 20 years ago. And whereas today that kind of stuff is normal. It's very normal. Back then it was not. And I was like that poor guy. I, I actually have his cookbooks. I mean, I really enjoy Jamie Oliver. I really do. Um, let's see. The women looked gorgeous today. I loved Alyssa's dress. Alyssa looked very pretty today. All of them did, did actually. Uh, Whoopi was dressed kind of like Tiki. <laughs> And that was fun. I was glad that Anna was there. I was glad for this Thanksgiving show. They had all of the women there that make up the cast. Um, that was good to see them all together. Let's see. I'm trying to think, guys. What else stood out to me? That was pretty much it, really. Um, 
not much else. I will say this. I like that Carla's food was more appetizer based. You know, it wasn't like a big, it was like today she brought out things that were not traditionally that we don't traditionally cook like those um, squash type balls. I forgot. It, was it butternut squash or acorn corn? I can't remember. Some type of squash. Um, and all the women were like, this is delicious. The dessert was like a tart type thing. I like that. Um, I like food that you can cook that's delicious and nutritious, but that you don't have to spend hours and hours and hours. Do any of you guys have any of Carla's cookbooks? If you do, let us know in the comments. Let us know. Because I was thinking about that today. I thought, you know, we have a we have like a tons of used bookstores here. Um and I rarely go into them because I find that the dust from the books, I don't know. I just find that it, I don't have allergies, but there's something about the smell in there, like in one particular one that's close to where we live that I'm like, I can't go in here. Uh, it's like a musty smell. Is it, y'all know what I'm talking about? Any of you like book lovers going to these old bookstores, these used bookstores where they have books like from the 1600s and so like people who died, their estate, the kids just like took, take all the books to the, to the used bookstore and, and get rid of them, you know, kind of those type of things. Um, but I will say that today when I was watching her, I thought, I wonder if she has a holiday cookbook. I know they said you can go on the website, uh, the used website and see all those recipes. But I thought, I wonder if she has a holiday cookbook that has some of that stuff in there. Uh, Cause some of that stuff, it's not even hot. I wouldn't even categorize it technically as holiday. Like you can cook it at any time. Um, like if you're going to have a, a, a card game, you guys have card games. We, we do card games sometimes, you know, where uh, some friends come over and we play cards and all that kind of do spades and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, guys, that's it for me. Today's show was really good. It was glad to, I was glad to see the women. Um, if you listen to the behind the table podcast, you know that the executive producer, Brian, Tada, he and his wife, they are down South for the holidays because she is from Virginia. He's from Long Island and, um, they met at a bar. We've learned. <laughs> That's why I really love that podcast because if you are nosy like me, <laughs> you like to hear people's business. It's so good because I've learned so much about Brian Tedda. You know what I really wish? I wish Candy Carter, shout out to Candy Carter. A lot of you remember I used to do stories on Candy Carter. She was Brian's boss. She was this, uh, a senior executive producer. She was actually there before Brian. And then um, Candy went to Tamron Hall show. That didn't work out. And then she stayed an ABC employee for a while. And then now she is, she's doing great work with other shows. The reason we see that Oprah daily stuff is because Candy brokered that deal from my understanding. Now, if you know different, let me know in the comments. But from what I understand, I was told this years ago, that was because her, because Candy worked for Oprah for close to 15 years, I think. She wasn't there the whole 25 years, but she was a producer on the Oprah Winfrey show. Uh, so anyway, she still had relationships with uh, those people. So anywho, um, so I wish Candy were there and that she also was doing some of these behind the tables because I would love to know more about her life and, you know, her parenting style and what happens, you know, and kind of how things are going in her home with her husband. And because Brian talks a lot about he and his wife and how they're raising their two daughters and all that. So I think the behind the table is my favorite because it's more personal and personable. And I am that kind of person with people in real life. I'm very personable. I'm very personal as well. And um, I find that those conversations always lead to really good friendships long term. Um, and so anywho, so there you have it, guys. That's what I thought about today's show. That's my view on the view. Drop down there in the comments. Let everyone know if you saw today's show, what you thought about it. And here's the thing, guys. What are y'all looking forward to uh, for the next uh, portion of this season? For me, um, this season has been kind of slow. Um, it's not been that exciting, even though we've had some good guests from time to time. Like for me, uh, well, I'll tell you that later on a different podcast. I'm going to talk to you about what's been my favorite interview thus far. Um, now that the actor strike is over and it's been over for a few weeks, maybe we'll have more exciting guests uh, for the second half of the season. Um, because remember, they're going to be with us just for a couple of weeks in December. And then they're going to be gone for, I think, a couple of weeks. No, actually, I think closer to two and a half, three weeks for the winter break uh, in December. So anywho, guys, thanks so much for joining me. My view on the view. I'll talk to you on the next one.